to support him, to support his cause, his family, to support him falling. We are remembering Officer Craig Lehner today as we are just hours away from saying a final goodbye. And an overwhelming response from the Western New York community will tell you how you can help. And on a much lighter note, the Sabres finally snagged their first home win of the season. We'll have all your highlights coming up in Daybreak Sports. Good morning, everyone. It is 501, 46 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. And this morning we are celebrating a hero as we say goodbye to a local officer who was lost in the line of duty. Officer Craig Lehner will be laid to rest later today and all morning long we will pay tribute to a man who served our country and our city. And we've got team coverage this morning with Daybreak's Pete Gallivan and Stephanie Barnes. I want to start though with Patrick this morning because the weather may have an impact on the event schedule for today. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, guys. It is. Yeah, rain is uh, setting up. It looks like to set up right over the procession uh, this morning. And that's going to make uh, for, you know, uh, it, 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 not a difficulty in traveling around, but it will be a wet mid to late morning. And you can clearly see it. A band of rain is setting up right now over... Ontario and this is clearly I mean you can see this is clearly lake effect that is uh, working through and it's beginning to shift to the east. So that band of rain is expected to move over Niagara County. It'll move through Grand Island and then set up shop. It appears right over Buffalo, especially Buffalo North is how it appears now. Let's zoom in a little tighter here and you can see that band. Here it is. Here's Grand Island. Here's Niagara Falls. The rain is just about to you and it's going to shift to the south very, very slowly. In fact, let's take a look at future look here and you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through time. Look at right right here. 10 o'clock. I mean, that's right when you know the the um, services are are going on and then when they end and the procession begins that rain band is still going to be overhead watch as we go through time here it begins to slip south a little bit but again this is something we just have to watch how it evolves but the chance is there for it to be very wet through the mid late morning early afternoon and then all of us getting into it except niagara county you'll be north of the action by then and then it'll head into the southern tier as we go through tonight and begin to disorganize just a bit temperature are going to be cool today. Right now, we are in the 40s for the most part. 52, though, where it's cloudier in Niagara Falls, 47 in Buffalo. The wind, of course, is going to be out of the southwest, 15 to 20 miles an hour. The wind should relax a bit as we head into the afternoon. So here's your forecast for today. It does call for periods of rain. If you're in the south towns, yours comes a little bit later but we all get wet with a southwest wind 10 to 20 miles an hour. We dry out a bit for the end of the week and then more rain for parts of the weekend and maybe, just maybe, a little snow early next week for Halloween. Your forecast is coming up. All right, Patrick, thank you. And as we said, we have team coverage this morning to remember Officer Craig Lehner. Pete Gallivan is near uh, Key Bank Center this morning as thousands make their way to Buffalo to attend the officer's funeral. Good morning, Keith, Pete. Good morning, John. Good morning, Melissa. Yeah, just as an indication of how big a crowd they're expecting, we are set up actually in Canal Side because Buffalo Police have already set up a perimeter around Key Bank Center in anticipation of the numbers. And it, it is because Officer Laner touched so many people in so many different ways. He was a member of the K-9 Corps. He was a member of the underwater dive team. He was more than just an officer, though. He was uh, a military veteran who served in Iraq. He was a, a brother, a son, a nephew, an uncle. And by all accounts, he was a friend to just about everyone he came in encounter with. Now, it, it's expected to be, once again, a huge turnout all along the procession route, as well as here at Key Bank Center. One of the most moving moments of the service is expected to be when Officer Laner's dog, Shields, walks alone behind the casket in the procession. Shields is named, of course, in honor of Jimmy Shields, a fellow officer who died in the line of duty back in 2002. State representatives are expected to introduce a joint resolution that will honor Laner statewide for his life and service. A Liberty menu, uh, Medal is expected to be presented to his family. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will attend, as well as law enforcement, military, friends, family, strangers, all who uh, have spent the last couple of weeks honoring the life of Officer Craig Lehner. The arena holds 19,000. 
They are expecting a full house. Between 5,000 and 10,000 members of law enforcement from around the U.S. and Canada are expected to attend, illustrating the same support the Buffalo Police Department talked about from day one. We didn't have to make one call for assistance. The call started within an hour of the emergency call going out. What do you need? How can we assist? So, you know, it's it, it's heartwarming. It's definitely uh, makes us proud to be in law enforcement, and we're doing the best we can to just search for our brother. And today that support will be felt tenfold as a community gathers here to remember a fallen hero and support his family, both his traditional family as well as family in the uh, in the police department and law enforcement. Now back out here live, what's expected to happen is about 9 o'clock on the plaza, Buffalo police officers will be gathering and then they will be let into the arena, the, for the uh, Key Bank Center. Now the public will be gathering on this side, the Main Street entrance over by the Sabres store. They will be led into the arena uh, just after the police get in. The public will be sitting up in the 300 section, and they are expecting a full house. Also, they're expecting crowds along the procession route, which starts at the funeral home, and that's where we uh, catch up with my colleague Stephanie Barnes, who is standing by live as well. Stephanie? Yeah, hey Pete, good morning. The private prayer service is expected to be here this morning at Lakeside here in Hamburg for family, a few friends and police officers were told. And then from here they will travel along Route 5 to Key Bank where you are, Pete, where the actual funeral will take place. We're told they should leave around 915 from here. Let's run you through what the route of this limited procession from here will look like. They'll start here at Lakeside Memorial Funeral Home. Uh, the procession will then go north on Route 5, like I said. They will travel all all the way to Ohio, the Ohio Street exit just before the Skyway. The procession will then go along Ohio Street, Michigan Avenue and Perry Street before circling around Harbor Center and ending right in front of the Key Bank Center. The service is set to begin at 10 o'clock this morning. We've been telling you all week about the outpouring of support from the community. Even those who didn't know Officer Lehner personally, the funeral home director here at Lakeside says that the family has been touched by how much compassion the community has shown them. Our website over the last two hours has been exploding. Uh, people are leaving messages of condolences, very heartfelt, very moving uh, messages from people that are really emotionally attached to the situation. Aside from those many people showing their support online and by showing up for calling hours here at the funeral home, there have been some other ways that the community has responded. Porch lights have been switched out for blue tinted lights, City Hall, the electric tower, and the Peace Bridge are lit up blue as well. And pumpkins at the Great Pumpkin Farm in Clarence were painted blue with all proceeds going to Officer Laner's family. And there are still ways that you can help this family. You can donate to the family or you can also donate to the canine unit. Buffalo Police ask that you do so by donating directly to the Pol Police Benevolent Association. You can find all that information on our website, WGRZ.com. Reporting live here in Hamburg, I'm Stephanie Barnes. Let's go back to you guys in the studio. All right, Steph, thanks. In the next half hour of Daybreak, we'll hear more about who Officer Lena was and how you can support his family in Buffalo Police. And we'll have live coverage of the funeral and the events before and after it starting at 9 o'clock this morning on Channel 2, and that'll be on Facebook Live throughout the day. It's 5.09 on Daybreak, and in other news this morning, the infamous black sludge in the Niagara River is now an international problem. Elected officials in Canada are telling us that they're furious with the smelly, dirty water coming from the wastewater treatment plant on the New York side. This raw sewage is spewed into the river near Niagara Falls several times over the past few months. A member of provincial parliament said that he's asking the Ontario Environment Minister to investigate the impact on Canadian water. And he's telling the Niagara Falls Water Board on the U.S. side that it needs to fix the problem. You see the seven wonders of the world? The last thing you want to do is be on the Maid of the Mist or Hornblower and be surrounded by raw sewage that smells so bad uh, that it's making you sick on the boat. And the Water Board says it badly needs infrastructure upgrades, but says it appreciates all of the efforts to help solve the problem. All right, Patrick's here now with uh, more on that rain ban expected to set up over our area. Yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's, I mean, it's going to be 
right over us. And yeah. we hope that it doesn't deter people from coming out. Just right. dress appropriately. Exactly. But at 11 o'clock, when that procession is happening from Key Bank Center to Forest Lawn, yeah. we want to see Delaware Avenue lined with people showing their support for Officer Laner and all Buffalo police officers. And when has a little rain gotten in the way of exactly. Buffalonians showing up in a cause like this? All right, so yeah, we're not we're not trying to paint a doom and gloom scenario, but just to give you a heads up, it will be wet. It looks like uh, during the mid to late morning, and there is that rain band uh, setting up over Ontario currently, and it's beginning to shift to the east. It is right now touching far northwestern Niagara County, so Lewiston and Youngstown. Uh, you're getting into it. You can see some of that rain right here and we'll zoom in a little tighter and you'll see the uh, rain is just about to Niagara Falls and that band again is showing signs of shifting as the wind is becoming a little bit more southwesterly. So that's kind of pushing this thing along. We'll zoom in a little tighter too. notice here's Niagara Falls. The rain is just about to you. Lewiston, you're getting wet. Porter, Youngstown, all of us are going to get into it later on this morning. All right, so here's what to expect. Uh, first of all, some of the highlights. Lake effect rain will be focused across the north. So Buffalo North, it looks like through the mid to late morning. The rain spreads into the south towns a little later on. Dry weather, though, resumes tomorrow. Now, with the rain, it gets cooler. Temperatures today only in the 40s across the southern tier. Low 50s from Buffalo to Batavia Arcade and notice those winds kind of converging right over the lake and that will enhance a little bit some of the rain that rolls on through. So that's your forecast for today. Now let's kind of peek ahead and show you what we're expecting. Lake effect rain cool 52 southwest winds 10 to 20, but those winds will calm down a little bit as we head into the afternoon tonight. Still, we've got showers as that rain band shifts south, south breeze 5 to 10. Next five days, tomorrow looks okay. There will be some lingering clouds in the morning, then dry. Friday looks gorgeous, 63. 65 on Saturday, rain late, late afternoon and evening. And right now, we're still expecting some showers for the Bills game on Sunday. 53, that is it. And then it gets even cooler than that as we approach Halloween. We'll have that forecast coming up in just a few guys. Alrighty, Patrick Banks will still to come. Vice President Mike Pence broke a tie vote in the Senate to do away with some important consumer protections that started in the Obama era. Details on that just ahead. First of all, let's see what Matt Granite's working on today. Today I have your key to bringing movie theater sound quality to your home. And you oh, yeah. won't believe the price. An eighth Right now, a live look outside over downtown Buffalo, 46 degrees at 513. Stay with us. Fifty two today, the average fifty six, the record set five years ago on that warm summer and fall, seventy nine in two thousand twelve.
All right, drive for most of us this morning heading out to the bus stop. Numbers in the 40s, but periods of rain, it looks like as we head into the afternoon, a high of only 52. The shelter in place order has been lifted in Niagara Falls. That order was given Monday night after a hazmat situation in the Wegmans parking lot on Military Road. A tanker truck crashed into a light pole, causing some of the liquid hydrogen to escape. They were able to contain the situation and transfer the remaining hydrogen to another tanker. Military and Packer roads are now back open as well. And the boil water advisory for residents in the village of Fredonia and town of Pomfret has been lifted. The order had been in place on Saturday because of a water main break. Water samples show the water is once again safe to drink and to use. A member of the president's own party is calling him out and not apologizing for it. Republican Jeff Flake gave a 20 minute speech on the Senate floor yesterday, criticizing Trump, saying he believes the president is a threat to the country, says he will not run for his seat in Arizona again because of the current administration. He then went on to criticize the Republican Party for no longer believing in its core principles. The Republican led Senate has voted to repeal a banking rule that would let consumers band together to sue their bank or credit card companies. Vice President Pence cast the tie breaking vote. The vote reflects the effort of the Trump administration and congressional Republicans to undo consumer regulations that Republicans say harm the free market. Well, this morning we continue efforts to save you money. Today we help to upgrade your home theater at Black Friday prices. Our deal guy Matt Granit shows us how it's done. Movie theater sound quality in your home, your living room, your man cave, your woman cave, your den. Great to be with you for enjoying the big game streaming audio wirelessly. This thing is amazing. With prices that start at under 100 bucks, this 31 inch Bluetooth soundbar, which streams wirelessly from a tablet, a smartphone, hooks up to your TV, is something one of my favorite morning show directors put to the test. Having a three-year-old at home, we're not able to get out to the theaters as often as we'd like. With the addition of this Polk soundbar with wireless subwoofer, we're able to bring that theater experience right to our living room. With it being Bluetooth enabled, we're able to stream music from any of our devices right to our soundbar as easy as that. If you want to score this deal at Black Friday pricing, it's on our website, not a paid product. WGRZ.com is where I have you covered your biggest bargains in Western New York. Back to you. Have you ever used one of those at night to watch a movie and it's really loud and then the next morning you forget it's still on and you turn on the TV <laughs> to like watch the news? <laughs> My ears are a lot more sensitive in the morning too. So yeah. Everyone, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's I've like, been there. Yeah. So I've been there. Exactly. I want to watch Weekend Daybreak in like high fidelity and it, it, at decibel 10. All right. Uh, let's get to the five days. Show you what we've got. Uh, we've got uh, some rain today. Tomorrow, lingering clouds in the morning and then dry in the after. Well, uh, clearing skies in the afternoon. Friday looks great. Saturday too, 65 on Saturday, but there is rain coming and it will come probably late afternoon or evening and then showers. It looks like into your Sunday. All right, let's get right to the radar again. That'll be the focus of what we're looking at. And of course, timing out the rain in your neighborhood. This is a long fetch of rain. As you can see, it almost extends the length of Lake Erie and it will begin heading south as we zoom in a little bit. You'll see that uh, the rain is just now getting to Niagara County. It's going to get to Grand Island and over Amherst and Kenmore, Lockport. It probably will have a tough time getting all the way to Albion and Batavia. You'll see that the uh, rain band may lose some of its inland push a little bit as we go through time. All right, temperatures are in the 40s, a little warmer where it's cloudy in Niagara Falls, 52, 39 in Olean. And the wind, it's going to be a breezy day today, but the winds should slacken later on. 24 mile an hour wind sustained at Niagara Falls, 15 in Buffalo. All right, let's get right to the uh, forecast. We go through time and you'll notice, yeah, Upper 40s, low 50s today with periods of rain. Uh, if you live in Eden, if you live in uh, East Concord, the rain is coming, but it may take a while. If you live in Wheatfield, Grand Island, and uh, Pendleton, your rain is on the doorstep this morning. In fact, we'll show you future look coming up. Here's the big area of low pressure, and you can see the lake effect beginning to kick in. Let's get to future look. Of course, the lake is warm. We've got cool air that is generating this lake band, and as it heads through the morning, it sets up shop right over Buffalo and then kind of heads south from there. Notice it kind of wobbles back and forth. By this evening, it heads into the south towns and then it begins to fall apart as it heads into the southern tier. Notice tomorrow we're gonna see clouds 
and then decreasing clouds in the afternoon. Let's get right to the close up view. Here's downtown. Notice the timeline. Five o'clock. That's now we're dry. We go through the seven, eight o'clock hour. We're OK, but now the rain begins to move in and then it sets up right over downtown in South Buffalo 9930. Then as we go through time, if it shifts south, maybe we get a little bit of a break, but then it comes right back as we head into the early afternoon and then it shifts south from there. In terms of rainfall totals, notice that the focus of rain a half an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch right over Buffalo into South Buffalo and maybe even into the South Towns too in Dunkirk. Let's take a closer view here and you'll see that we've got the heaviest rain right over the city. All right, so the forecast for today looks like this. We're going to see dry weather this morning, then the rain rolls in, especially late morning into the afternoon. For tomorrow, we'll see lingering clouds early, and then we'll see plenty of uh, sunshine in the afternoon. Seven day forecast, dry Saturday, wet Saturday night into Sunday, and then showers, cool showers Monday and Tuesday. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the hills get some snowflakes Monday night and also on Halloween. Guys, we will be right back. Channel 2 News continues with sports. Dodgers Astros game one of the World Series last night in Los Angeles and it was a home run fest. We had three home runs in this one including this two run shot from Justin Turner of the Dodgers. He's been phenomenal this postseason. The home run gives the Dodgers a 3 1 lead and that's all they would need with Clayton Kershaw on the bump. The three time Cy Young winner goes seven innings allows just one run three hits 11 strikeouts. And the Dodgers take game one at home, 3 1 the final. Well, if only every Sabres game can be like the one Saturday night adversity, resilience, and completing a monster comeback 
to beat the Bruins in Boston in overtime. It was Buffalo's second win of the season and potentially a catalyst for many more. The Sabres back on home ice last night hosting the Detroit Red Wings. Sabres making some changes to the lineup. Evander Kane, Jack Eichel, Kyle Poso on the top line. Benoit Pouliot, Ryan O'Reilly, Jason Pominville on line two. Pouliot's there on your right. And here he is on the attack. Midway through the second period, Pouliot making money moves around the net and past Jimmy Howard. Watch again. Victor Antipin flips the puck on net and Pouliot is there for the rebound. And that's Gopin Squaw. His second of the year, first career point for Antipin, one nothing Buffalo. Robin Leonard starting a net for the Sabres, and he put on a clinic. 32 saves on all 32 shots. Six career shutout for Leonard, and the Sabres win their first home game of the season, one nothing. I think the game in Boston, it wasn't like a wake-up call, but I think it really showed when we play our game, we're su successful, and when we force pucks, Teams are good. Teams are good. They're going to make you pay. And uh, uh, when we play a simple game, I think we have very skilled guys in here. They're going to take advantage of uh, the opportunities they get. And so the Sabres improved to 3-5-2 and two on the year back-to-back -back wins. And they're back in action tonight in Columbus. Seven years after trading running back Marshawn Lynch, the Bills have yet to host the five-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion in Orchard Park. That was going to change this week until this past Thursday night. During the scuffle between the Raiders and Chiefs, Lynch, who now plays for Oakland, ran onto the field, grabbed a referee, and shoved him. Lynch was ejected, suspended one game by the NFL, and so he will not play this week against the Bills. Jonah Javad, Daybreak Sports. Right now we're taking a live look outside at the electric tower lit up in blue for Officer Craig Lehner. It's 46 degrees at 528. We'll be right back.